Ready? Are you kidding? You pointed at me or you just flipped me off? No. I, 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 I thought about the second one, though. No, I know. I, it probably is. A lot of people have, anyway. <laughs> How y'all all welcome. Moongraphon Show. Open Forum Friday. We'll get to your calls. You may want to call and talk about your best candidate. Uh, of course, the presidential debate still, not the debate, but the, the uh, presidential race still still on a lot of uh, thunder from a lot of people. But we got congressional races, and we got one right here in the third congressional uh, district, uh, Gus Ranch joined me. Gus, good to see you, man. How you doing? It's been a while. I, I, I'm doing great, man. Well, it's 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 your first run, and I know you want it to be a prosperous run. How do you think you're doing? Uh, and just give me a just a heads up on your election stuff. We're we're doing we're doing wonderfully. I tell you what, I'm so blessed to have you know throughout the entire district, all all the parishes, we've got a lot of people helping this campaign that we've connected with. You know, being an outsider, being somebody who's never been in politics, being somebody who's young and who's actually built a business and, and has you know lived and worked under under the rules that our government likes to strangle us with, including Obamacare, which I know you're a little bit familiar hey, by with. The way, there, by the way, some people tell them, I, I got to call Rob said, Moon, you need to tell people, are you on Obamacare? I said, I never said it was on Obamacare, but if you go get your, your, your form from your insurance company, it says, here's why everything is skyrocketing. And Obama's name is on there several times, but I was being Obama, Affordable Care Act. Affordable. 3200 a month. Tell me how's that affordable. Let me tell you. That, what, would, that would be an over expensive house note and car note. <laughs> let me tell you what the government does incredibly well. And I want everyone in your listening audience to really listen to this. If we could get whatever department comes up with the naming of the bills, mm -hmm. they're doing a bang up job. Now, everyone else up there ought to be fired, but the guys doing the naming of the bills, they're doing a bang up affordable job. Affordable care. <laughs> affordable care. You're in the healthcare business, so I know oh, what a disaster, but it has affected me. And what's going to happen is after it runs everybody out of the insurance business, it's going to run the businesses. I talked to a guy yesterday who was very liberal. My insurance hasn't been that bad. Well, you're with a company. Companies are going to start taking the hits, too. When the company starts taking the hits, it's when it's going to really go. That's only probably a year or so away. Two, two things that are wrong. And, and, look, we're not going to belabor it to death. We know it's broken. We know it needs to go. But the reality is we haven't had a free market in healthcare for 30 or 40 years. We, you know, Bobby Jindal privatized the charity system. Well, that doesn't make it a free marketplace. No. Just call it trading one monopoly for another doesn't fix the Good problem. Point. Good point. Hey, a couple. One thing I want to, I do want to praise your campaign about, and you were one of the only ones, maybe the only one. And uh, you challenged Scott on jail, and I thought your commercial was really good. If people paid attention to him, they don't vote the lifetime politician at all. They run from him. Matter of fact, I got a clip, Brian. We might even play it today with uh, him going up there, sitting down with Congress, and all these great speeches he gives. He gets up there, he looks like a fool in front of these people. In front of these congressmen, he's fighting for us. Yeah, he, he, great speech. Oh, wonderful speech. But that's it. It stops right well, now. And, and, and you challenged him on a lifetime career politician. The, the, the reality is, you know, the, he did get, look, six years ago was a good speech. It was, you know, there's nobody who gives a better nursery rhyme speech oh, than Scott no, the on the show. Oh, the in the shell, fills it off. I mean, you can go on with that, but, but it, the doesn't, problem it, doesn't, is, it doesn't get anything. The problem that I have, Moon, is that in the last six years, he's run for three offices, and he's used that same speech. Good speech. We all agree. Good speech. But but good Lord, in the last six years, that's what you're going to hang your hat on. And to your point, the United, the uh, the congressional hearing that he went to, Scott's not proud of that. I promise you he's not because he didn't look prepared and he was representing our state. And so I, I know he wants a do over on that. I don't blame him. We all would. We all make mistakes. But that's where you had a chance to really get the meat and potatoes, not yeah, given the speech. No. no, no, the speech was easy. To go out in front of Congress when they lighten your butt up because you don't know sheep. Boop, from and, look, honey, and look, and look, and def I will defend Scott. Those congressmen love to try to light people up. I mean, let's not be. Yeah, <laughs> but when, you, when you run your mouth and think that's going to get you through everything, it doesn't work always that way. The, the only, and I'm going to ask you about this, and I don't even know. Uh, I know Charles Bustani had an aide, and the aide ended up working with you, and they made a big deal about that. Your comments on that? Oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, there, there's a guy that we employ to hand out signs and that's a well-respected member of the African-American community in, um, in Acadia Parish who, uh, who actually sits on a few boards in Acadia Parish. And, and according to, you know, the, the reports, you know, it, he's on the run on the lamb. Well, I, I got news for you. Everywhere that we've gone, city council meetings, uh, you know, I've, I've gone on the road a couple of times with him. He's introduced me to a few people and they said, Oh, if you're with that man, you're with a good man. So look, whether 15, 20 years ago, um, whether or not he owned a motel, where whether or not somebody may have, yeah, yeah. you know, the congressman may yeah, have gone know, there or not, how, I, I, I have just, no I, idea. I'm throwing it at you because I know it's kind of <laughs> out there, and I, I just figured, what the hell, you you can address it. I judge people with my own eyes and with my own heart, and and so far the man's been nothing but hard working for me. And I don't I don't run at the first sign of trouble. I'm a, I'm a real person. I'm not a politician. I I think I think it's going to be interesting to see. Everybody has thrown out that Angel is automatically in runoff. If the and I must say if the right Republican 
is in this off running against him can beat him. I just don't know where he's going to come out in the first round. I mean, there's a lot of people disappointed when he knifed the Republicans in the back, and I think you pointed out a good point. He was for Bell Edwards. He knifed Vitter in the back, and then uh, all of a sudden the uh, uh, we got mega taxes and mega more to come because Bell Edwards is sitting there in the governorship. Well, that's that's the problem that I have. Look, I, I did in my ad. We we referenced a few facts, quite frankly. Absolutely. Um, and 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 Scott and Jill has the best as the best web trolls in the business, unfortunately. And some of the questions that come in, well, well, Scott raised those taxes to pay for roads. Well, that's a great reason. But we got 26 billion great reasons in Louisiana to raise taxes. We got four and a half trillion great reasons at the federal government to raise taxes. The problem is we got to change something. We can't keep raising taxes for all these great reasons. We have to do our job and make tough decisions in this country. And we've got we've got Congress is full of people who have hard luck, great reasons for what they're doing, but they're not doing their job, which is which is making sure that the United States of America, the great country that I grew up in, exists for future generations. We don't do that by continuing to kick the can down the road. There ain't no more road to kick it down. No, no, no. no. And the can, you can't find a can. They've been kicked, they've been kicked it down. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Gus Rance, my special guest. He's running for congressman of the 3rd Congressional District. Uh, yeah, it's it's so disheartening to see uh, what's going on in respect to uh, debt. Ill, Ill, let me tell you something. Immigration and Ill, 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 let's see, illegals, which, by the way, go hand in hand, is really turning the country changing the country. Democrats know it. They are the ones, they're pushing this because they know their votes up the road. And that's why you're seeing some states never go Republican again. Well, the fact that you can come to this country illegally, have a child, which we're going to pay for regardless because of all the, the rules and laws, and then that child is entitled to a lifetime of American United States citizen benefits is a is a old, archaic, and failed policy. Absolutely. And it's okay to say that. It doesn't make you a racist. It doesn't make you a xenophobe. No. Let, can we not have a conversation without everybody being accused of something? In the real world, we sit across from each other in the boardroom. We say, uh, we disagree on this. We agree on this. Let's go forth. But, I mean, you know, politics, I, I, look, I'm getting into it. I understand. There's there's dirt, I'm sure, coming out on me. Scott's going to dig deep and, I and find that. something. I, I walked by. You didn't stink or smell. So you, <laughs> you, you're probably, I'm taking it. You put deodorant on. Brush your teeth. <laughs> it's a... It's a uh, Amazing thing to watch. Now, what what are people telling you? I mean, everybody knows the issues of the day, but as you talk to people, I think you see, this is my opinion, I see a lot of fear in people. I see a lot of hopelessness in people. And I'm talking about good American citizens who go to work every day. They worry about them. They worry about their future. They worry about their retirement. They worry about all that stuff right now. And when you look at uh, what's happening in Washington, D.C., nobody is inspiring anybody to be great. Now, when I say that, I'm not talking about Trump, because Trump actually has, is inspiring people. I'm talking about who's sitting there right now running the country. Well, unfortunately, look, we do have a lot of apathy. 2016 has been a little bit different. We've been a little more excited as a populace, but historically, we've got a ton of apathy. And, and that's, what, that's what I want to engender in people is there doesn't have to be one greatest generation. Let's, let's be the next greatest generation. Let's be the generation that gets this under control, gets our debt under control, improves our military, improves our border. And, and I hate to say make America great again. Let's make America the next great nation, right? Mm -hmm. Let's get head and shoulders above everyone else. I believe in American exceptionalism. I absolutely do. You should. You should. There's no doubt about it. I, I, I just, I get a kick out of people that are not pushing that. And mm -hmm. that's why I think, I don't, if you like Trump or not, and I'm going to talk about you, is that Trump is the only one that has inspired anything. In the last few years, let, let in mean, his campaign for sure. A little bit about my background, which I think you know, Moon, but just to make sure the listeners do, I built my business from scratch, taking over broke, bankrupt, and sometimes too broke to be bankrupt businesses and hospitals, right? And what what you do when you take over a broke, bankrupt hospital is you have to make very difficult decisions. You sometimes you got to be the bad guy. Sometimes you got to say no, and I equate that to being a parent. If you never told your kids no, you're not a very good parent. Mm -hmm. It's the same way in business. You cannot say I, yes. I, to I have everything. no problem with telling my kids know was telling my wife no <laughs> and, and and let me tell you something that's why i got in trouble shut up brandon <laughs> oh, i agree with Brand, you by the way brandon is just married so he's learning something Salud. New here. <laughs> thank you thank you six months yes i mean as everyone just told you yes dear right yeah, yes, yes, yes ma'am yes ma'am uh -huh. but you know when you're taking over bankrupt businesses when you're trying to turn around something revenue covers up a lot but you don't always have the benefit in the real world of having more revenue absolutely and so sometimes you got to actually roll up your sleeves and solve the problems. We love the world hunger aid. We solved world hunger, right? I mean, well, we, we got a little the, money. We don't AIDS, know where the money AIDS went. AIDS rock concert. We solved AIDS. No, you didn't. You can't throw money at the problem. You actually have to roll up your sleeves and go to work. Speeches don't solve problems. Speeches no. don't put people to work. We do. In South Louisiana, we can do it if we get the federal government out of our way. Yeah, I, and I'm glad you brought that up because I think the key 
for this country now, besides the moral decline, which I don't know how we put that back in a bottle, but it is, is businesses being the best they can be and, 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 and allowing people like yourself, me, Brandon, whoever, to go out and be the best we can be. And, you know, you mentioned regulations when you first came on. If you're going to regulate it to death, it's not going to do well. And the worst part about regulations from the government is you have no guidance. Yeah. It's one look. We can work. We're, we're smart guys. We can we can work within any parameters. Stop changing them. Yeah, <laughs> that's the other part of it. Yeah, and that was uh, I was I was saying when you heard me, me ranting on my uh, health care bill yesterday <laughs> was not ranting but ranting on my health care <laughs> bill was the fact is I want the government to get out of my way. I don't want them to help me. I got to go make a couple extra sales. I didn't say okay, government need to send me some subsidies to help me out. No, I got to go make some sales now to make up for what the knife I took in the back from from the government really. And so, uh, anyway, I'm glad you talked about it because the businesses, the people that want to go out and do the best they can will, there will always be a group of people. They're not white. They're not black. They're not green. They're not yellow. A group of people who sit on that bud and wait for this ship to be, come in. And somebody that does that, this ship hadn't even been built. So how are you going to have a ship come in that's never been built? In America, people want to make it on their own. And if you don't, go, there's plenty of countries to help you. And America's very unique in that. Yeah. Every, there's plenty of country for you to sit back for them to give you something. We become in that type of country. Uh, just a few seconds left. You can address the voters however you want to talk to them. I would talk nice, but that's my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Red. <laughs> I, look, there are, there's a lot of good people in this race. There's actually, quite frankly, there's a lot of decent people in Washington. There's not a lot of accomplished people in Washington. We got lots of diplomas and paper on the wall, but there's not enough people who have ever had any dirt underneath their fingernails. I've lived and worked under the rules of Washington, D.C. my entire career, and I've fought against Washington, D.C. my entire career. I really want to go up there because I want this job. Not the title. And I ask for you to give me your vote on November 8th. Yeah, and we really need leaders. We need some fighters. We really do. God bless you, you, my man. friend. Thank Good you. luck Same to you. you. I mean that sincerely. And uh, uh, thanks thanks for everything. All right, we're going to take a quick break. More to Moon Graffon Show to come. Don't go nowhere, folks. It's open for them Friday. No telling with Brandon to pull out today. We'll be right back. That's a bad dude. Hi, y'all all. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. 844-766-6607. Picks and has that hotline open form Friday. You can talk about what you want to talk about. And I got an open line for you. By the way, I, I, there was a piece Angel sent out. And is a, on one side of the piece that he mailed out to certain people, he's got he's a conservative Republican. All he's working is the liberal Democrats. That's all he's working, folks. I'm telling you, this is such a joke. But on the flip side of this piece, he's got Larry Rader. And Larry Rader is the one he wants in the runoff. I'm telling you, this was a dual mail out for him as something he's not, and then for Larry Ray. If, if you are a liberal or minority and you get this card and you turn it over, it says Larry Rader, liberal Democrat. Well, if you, all right, good. Then it says endorsed the Lafayette Democrat, endorsed by the Lafayette Democrat Party. Well, if you're a Democrat, you go, good. Supports increasing the minimum wage. Good. Supports Obamacare. Good. Supports President Obama's energy plan. Good. Supports free college tuition. Good. It was a two-piece pro mail out for Larry and for Scott. And Scott's the one sent it out. Nobody ever sends out stuff like this unless you're trying to help somebody get in the runoff. It reminds me of when Edwin Edwards helped David Duke get in the runoff the first time, and Edwards ended up beating him. He was funneling money. He helped get money through uh, volunteers. And people that were willing to give money through people to give money to him, and uh, this is this is the same, some very similar deal. This is a pro. This is a pro Angel, pro Raider, uh, a mail out. I mean, Brandon, you okay? If you're a liberal Democrat, and you go, or oh, Democrat, and you go, I don't know who to vote for, and, you, and, and then you get this and flip it, and it goes, Larry Raider, liberal Democrat, endorsed by the Lafayette Democrat Party. If I'm, a, I go, okay, good, I like that. Supports increasing the minimum wage. Yeah, we fought that. That's a big thing they run for. Support Obamacare. Support President Clinton's Obama energy plan. Supports free college tuition. That's, that's your guy. This is as pro Larry Rader as it was pro Scott. The difference is he told the truth about Rader. He lied about himself, calling himself a conservative Republican, well, which he's not even close. The guy's not even close. He's working with the liberals on the backside. Well, it capitalizes on people's mindset that elections tend to be between Republicans and Democrats. And it capitalizes on that mindset that naturally tend, some people will naturally tend to go instead of a race where you have two Republicans likely in the runoff, they likely go to a Republican Democrat because that's how it's framed nationally. 
Yeah, and I think it's a good point. And if you don't pay attention and you're paying attention at the end, which most people do, Brandon, mm -hmm. when you pick this up, this looks, you could turn it around and walk around and say, hey, y'all vote for Larry. Hey, look, I got Larry. Look, you ain't got to show the other side. So it becomes a mail-out piece because Radar probably doesn't have the money that Scott has. So he doesn't, and, and to me, this is how I read it. By the way, I read it right. I mean, you don't have to, you don't have to really get into this, folks. You can just watch it. But I just thought, man, it must be nice. <laughs> Kiss the cheeks of both sides like a windshield wiper. It's uh, it's sickening, but it's it's all part of politics, folks. All part of politics, all part of the game. So interesting to see. By the way, Bob Mann, whose only claim to fame was he was John Bro's right hand man for thirty years. Then they stuck him in Governor Blanco's administration for a year or two, and he couldn't do the job. I never forget going to meet with her, and she was such a gracious lady. And uh. And Bob Mann, every time we asked a question, he had to go run to the phone. <laughs> Brandon, it was sad. He had to go run to the phone to, uh, to, to, to try to answer our questions that he, that he couldn't answer. And so it, it got to be comical. And every time he came back from the phone, he, oh, we'll get back to you on that. Well, we'll get back to you on that. Well, we'll get back to you on that. Cause he didn't have a clue. And, Bob Mann made it big just because he was John Bro's aide, and John Bro politically was able to stick around for about 30 years. The great John Bro, who's going to run for governor one day. Y'all knew that? Well, Brandon, I brought a piece for you. Just thought you'd get a kick out of it. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. Look here. I remember this. This is back. News Star, March 10th, 2007. It's been Moon Memories Week over well, here. It, it has been shared because, memories all I know, week but I've been, I've been unpacking some boxes. Bro's <laughs> gubernatorial fate unknown. Senator, former senator would decide if he runs for governor within two weeks. Well, <laughs> what was funny about this, I was doing a countdown, and people remember this. Oh, and yeah. I ended up going to day 59, and here's what I do. Day one, when will John Bro announce he's not running? Day two, when <laughs> got to day 59, he announced he wasn't running for something that he didn't own anyway. He was a senator, former senator, a zero. By, I, mean, I get to Bob man when we get back. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. Great to have you with us. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. Brandon is constantly watching the news, waiting for them to drop something on Donald Trump. Uh, we're waiting. We don't know what it is yet. but uh, I just wonder if it's going to come before or after my shift today. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> that's, that's all we're asking, though. What will they make up now? Uh, Hillary Clinton, not qualified to be president. Qualified. If, if, you were, if you had a job for the mafia, she would be the one. If you had a if you had a job for for uh, corruption, I think Hillary got to get it. But this is not for it. We need somebody to make to 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 turn around what people believe that Barack Obama had a good eight years when it was very very destructive to the United States of America. Uh, I want to go back. Bob Mann. Bob Mann writes. He's the only one who can write a piece like this. If Republicans can't win without suppressing black votes, they should find other work. And he goes on to say, I'm not going to read all this to you, about Vote, Vote Integrity Project because they, they're challenging uh, stuff that's going on with people registered to vote. And, and what he does, he goes right out. Remember, remember, what's the only thing in the playbook of the Democrats? Great score, right? So here's what he says. As early voters continued around the nation, daily reports streaming about alleged Republican efforts to influence the fall elections by suppressing the votes of people who vote for Democrats. Why is this happening now? Just because they say it's happening doesn't mean it's happening. See, that's what I, I noticed about Obama. He does something, he accuses somebody else. The Democrats do it, they accuse somebody else of doing it. Knowing good and well, they're the ones doing it. So they said this is particularly appalling in North Carolina where Republicans, that means not, they, they must be in trouble in North Carolina because uh, the president's over there just doing it, going through his usual lying uh, uh, process. But he says, where well, Republicans have challenged the register of thousands of people, most of them black Democrats. Now, folks, the reason they challenge it is that's where a lot of the cheating's taking place. And the reason they cheat in those areas is not because blacks aren't good people. It's because they can go there, and if anybody ever challenges, they can holler racism, like Bob Mann's doing. Bob Mann, Bob Mann is in a job because of John Bro. He's no more qualified to do this job than me. Okay. And, 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 and he's in there writing about stuff that had make no sense at all. Then he goes in, well, you know, when John Bro ran, well, 30 years ago in the U.S. Senate between Bro and Henson Moore, they tried to do all, and, and all that's a bunch of bunk. But far as I'm finding out 
and having to go into the black areas. This is the areas that a lot of the cheating has taken place for many, many years. And the reason they do it is because of Republicans. Say something they can do with Bob Mann's not racist. Racist, racism, racist, racism. That's all they know. And Bob Mann's no different. I mean, I can't believe they let this guy write. And he writes these ignorant stories. The Republicans suppressing vote. Where? Show me. Brandon, you're, you're not a Republican. I'm not either. But, I mean, tell me why Republicans are suppressing vote. There's no suppressing of votes. If you have the intelligence of a of a of a a, 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 a goldfish, <laughs> you can go vote. All you gotta do is register. All you gotta do is go to the poll and vote. Nobody's suppressing you. But suppressing a Bob man, this is how ignorant Bob is. The suppressing of the votes is being done by the media every day, saying Clinton won. It's already it's over. Clinton won. Oh, he can't get the electoral college. They telling you every day not to go vote. There's no reason to go vote. CNN. MSNBC, NBC, ABC, CBS, all of them are telling people this thing's over. The Washington Post, that's the pressing of votes. That's getting people depressed that that uh, Trump can't win. That, that's what's going on. That's more of a suppressing of votes than anything I've seen out there. Not anything Republicans are doing. There's not one person. And then they give one story with somebody who's 100 years old, Brandon, wants these emotional stories, who's been voting just the last 24 years. He was erased from the... From the, uh, 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 you know, from the, from the register. So why was he erased, Brandon? Wouldn't you want to know why he was erased? But Bob doesn't say that. He just said he got erased. Well, maybe he didn't vote the last six times, the last two presidential races. Maybe he hadn't voted much. You know, you can, I can get erased if I'm not voting. But they don't tell you the rest of the story. And Bob Mann is just as crooked and leftist as the rest of the Democrats. So if Republicans can't win without suppressing black votes, they should find other work. How about allowing all these illegals to vote? He doesn't do a story on that. He doesn't do it. So why don't we put cameras on white precincts and black precincts, and let's just see what goes on in the precinct. Don't want to do that. Why? Be racism on one side, not the other. That's Bob Mann. Political hack. John Bro political hack. But yet the, 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 the times pick a unit, let him keep writing. Robert Mann, they gave him a job, a six-figure job, gave it to him because he worked with John Bro for so long. That's how it works in this country. Ask Bob Mann how he got his job. He worked for Bob, he worked for John Bro for 30 years. But he's an expert now on Republicans suppressing votes. When I tell you, if you can get to a polling place and you're registered to vote, you can vote. But there are rules and laws that say you do get kicked off sometime, and it doesn't matter what color you are. You know, it's just the way it is. So, anyway. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. Let's go to Bo in Shreveport, Louisiana. How you doing, Bo? Hey, pretty good, man. Uh, glad to be on your show. I uh, just wanted to kind of talk about the uh, pre-college and everything else. Uh, about six years ago, I was broke fireman. Decided to go to school. Signed up for some grants. I got barely enough to go to my first semester. While in line to pay for everything, I had the two uh, females in front of me. They were both talking back and forth about how much they got, and it was about $1,200 a semester to go. I got about 1300 so I was able to turn a few other things. And they were talking about what they were wanting to get uh, with their extra money, and uh, $1,200 was about a full college load. And they ended up getting six grand a semester wow. for $1,200 <laughs> worth of uh, a schooling at a, at a local community college. So as far as the free college goes, uh, the way I see it is that they've gotten it multiple, multiple, and multiple times over, and I'm still stuck with student loans. So, yeah. I mean, uh, it, uh, it's just it's so frustrating to to hear them talk out of one side of their mouth. And, well, uh, I know it is. It, I know, but the thing about it is, there's no there's there's nothing free. There's no such thing as <clears throat> free college and free universities and none of that stuff. It's it's, it's crazy to even think about that. But you know what's funny? Uh, Hillary uh, Hillary Clinton took that from uh, Bernie Sanders. We now find out that Bernie, Bernie Sanders was knifed. All the people voting for him think it was a legitimate contest. It was nice. Yesterday, Bernie Sanders gets back on the stage with Hillary Clinton, knifing his own people, and people won't vote that voted for Bernie turn around and vote for Hillary. Correct. There's no, free, there's no free college tuition, buddy. And let me tell you something. If they ever do, it's going to be another disaster. They'll just take it out of my paycheck. Absolutely. So, I mean, 
So, uh, one more thing on the uh, on the uh, uh, voter suppression. Uh, last time I checked, any time you go to Social Security office, disability office, uh, Medicaid, Medicare, you have to present some kind of identification. So, why shouldn't you do the same when voting? No, man, that's 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 racism. Uh, that's I'm racism. Sorry. I, I, yeah, I'm the village idiot. So. No, no, that that's called Thank racism, you, but that's just the way it is. Ah, okay. Well, I guess I missed that lesson in college. Yeah, <laughs> I understand, brother. Thank you. Thanks for the call. By the way, Brandon, the, the thing on the two, they they uh, on the Angel thing, it said a conservative for Congress, and he puts all these people, and there's nothing else on the front of it. But if you look on the back side, it's all Larry Radar, and that that is more of a radar piece paid for by Angel and them than it was. And if I'm wrong, somebody try to tell me how I'm wrong. And I'm not wrong. That's why nobody's going to mention it. Let's go to Sheila on the road. How you doing, Sheila? I mean, no, you never know. You're never wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, I can see you don't know my wife. <laughs> you don't, you don't know Miss Tanya, do you? Hey, you don't know Miss Tanya, do you? <laughs> I met her at Chuck one time. Oh, did you? Okay, never mind. I'm really in trouble. <laughs> go ahead, man. Uh, I wanted to call about the uh, giant omelet celebration this weekend in uh, Abbeville. Okay. Uh, I don't think you've ever been. I haven't. Uh, Tell I me about it. In, you live in Vermilion Parish now, so I think you should go. No, I don't live. Uh, I don't live. Have, I don't live in Vermilion Parish, but I do go. I was there yesterday at Chuck's at, at lunch. <laughs> <laughs> well, you live close to it. Uh, I'm within 20 minutes or so. Yeah. Uh, the uh, we actually do say the prayer. And we actually do sing the national anthem awesome. on a Sunday when we do the eight. Well, I hope there's no professional football players that ever be sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, and, and most actually, of them stood okay, up. We actually have a mass on Sunday and everything. I mean, it's all. I mean, and we've done it. I think this is our. Oh shoot, uh, I can't. I'm not even going to say how many years it is. We, it's over five thousand eight. Wow. That's awesome. All right, how can people, you got a website that some people can go to real quick? Yes, yeah, a giant omelet uh, celebration. All right. Well, uh, I, I, ho- org. Yeah. I hope you have a big crowd. Uh, and it's all free. They give it, we give it away when we're done. All righty. Well, thank you very much. God bless. Thank you, Sheila. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. All right, we'll take a quick break. Morning Moon Graffon Show, open forum Friday, your day to talk about the things you want to talk about. We'll be right back. Rise and sun on the moon. Hi, y'all. All. Welcome back. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline where you can be part of the Moon Graffon Show. Hey, don't forget the Cane River Pecan giveaway again today. I'll be giving away some pecans. Somebody won yesterday. I've already sent it to him, but I didn't announce it. <laughs> now, hold up, Brad. Let me do something. I, well, as you know, long as they know, you know. No, they're going to. No, here we go. Hold up just a second, Brad. Hold up just a second. Who won yesterday? Uh, Ellen Stutes won yesterday. Ellen Stutes won yesterday. That was the winner. Uh, saying out of Crowley, Louisiana. So that was the winner yesterday. So yeah, I did have a winner. Said, you no, know, this computer works if you use it right. Anyway, just email me moon at moongraphon.com. Say I want to win some Cane River pecans. You can be glad you did. And if you're the winner and if you've already done it, you don't have to do it every day. You do it. You're in the box and, uh, we'll pull another name at the end of the program. Cane River Pecan, of course, uh, if you if you want to send out gifts for your customers, whew, there's not a better way, more personal way than to do them through Cane River Pecan. CaneRiverPecan.com, CaneRiverPecan.com. You're going to be glad you did. Jeffrey in Shreveport. How you doing, Jeffrey? How you are? Uh, doing fine, sir. Hanging in there. Oh, uh, man, that's good. That's good. Check this out. I, I'm a registered libertarian. I'm a Trump supporter. I'm a conservative, and I drove a truck over the road for 18 years, and I hauled produce. This is about Donald Trump and the wall and wanting to send illegals back across the border. When I hauled produce, 90% of the people that worked out there were Mexicans. None of them had documents. None of them spoke English. So if you're going to go send all these people back over to Mexico and build this wall, they can't come in and and, and uh, do their job in the fields. That makes the produce go up because we got to hire people and pay them higher wages. And that makes our produce go up. That affects everybody in this country. So before Trump, uh, Trump makes 
jumps the gun and wanting to say all this, he needs to consider the, the fact that within four to six years, our produce will go up maybe even 50%. Well, you got to remember this, though. There are people out there getting welfare that could be doing that. Number two, there are people. That's exactly so, now, hold right. up, though. Number two, let me say this, Jeffrey. Number two, everybody's not going back. You can almost forget that. There are some people over here legally. There are some people over here with green cards that are working. You see what I'm saying? We we automatically think that we automatically think that that's going to be the way it's going to happen. Now, I understand that. I mean, that's, we all we all do that. Like, oh my God, how are you going to do this? And you make a good point. I think you make a good point, but I don't think it'll work out quite like that. What I want to do is stop the flow of illegals coming in this country, getting benefits, and voting. We need to stop that. We need to stop the flow of refugees. But Hillary Clinton already said open borders. We don't let them all come across. But they know that that is to keep them in power. But but the future of my future, my kids' future, my grandkids' future, yours, is not going to be pretty. It's just not going to be pretty. And uh, But I think you got to start somewhere. you got to stop the borders and stop people from coming in. Then let's find out who belongs and who doesn't. Because a lot of people don't belong here. Yeah, I'm with you on that, and, and I'm, I'm a big supporter of that. It's just the fact that uh, I'm just trying to make awareness to people that that there is a possibility if he decides to do this and do what he says he's going to do, that there's a possibility that this could happen. I mean, they, I, I understand that he's not sending them all back, you know, everybody we got green cards working, you know, whatever. But that still is not enough to cover the hundreds of thousands of people that's got to be hired in these fields you know, to load my truck up with. All right. I look, I'm with and, you. I'm with you on that. I'm just, that's, once again, it's, 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 it's just one man's opinion. That's all. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. And I understand what you're saying. All, all right, right, brother. Got to run. Appreciate the call. Brandon is my Thanks. interview now. All right, good. I want to jump gears. Um, Brett Munson joined me. Farm South, uh, First South Farm Craft. How you doing, brother? Hey, Moon. Doing good. How are you? And I'm doing great. All right, man. Uh, t- t- you know, stop and tell people. Now, we, of course, we've been talking about your company for a long time. Tell people everything y'all do. Well, we pretty much do anything uh, agriculture. We'll do anything. Uh, we're we're really, really growing our business up here in northeast Louisiana and everywhere else. But uh, we, uh, we like to help people uh, get financing uh, for anything agriculture, whether it be a farmer for his production whether it be for somebody who just wants to maybe invest in a little timber or find them a good place to go kill a deer, we're, right. uh, we're here for them. Yeah, no doubt about it. Let's let's start with really what y'all do. Y'all can help people. If somebody has some land they, they're looking at and they want to buy, if somebody comes to y'all and says, look, we're looking for some land, y'all can help. Y'all can have both sides of the equation, huh? Well, we can. We can. We uh, we ourselves are not the ones that sell the land, but we have uh, we've got some – Real solid relationships with all the guys around here and everywhere else uh, who we can point them to to help them find that right place. Yeah, no doubt about it. Now, uh, you can help them with the financing. Uh, we can, do. Let me ask you a question. If somebody comes and you say, look, i got some beautiful land I want to buy, whether it's 160 acres, one acre, 400 acres, I like it, but I want somebody to come in and tell me what I can do. i got a lot of tree, a lot of timber. i got a, I got a pine on it. i got a place we can go hunting on it. Can you all help them break that down, what all they make and do with the land? We can. We, uh, we're pretty knowledgeable in everything that has to do with land and, and everything else, agriculture, which that helps us benefit them because uh, they, they'll have questions, and we're here to help them understand uh, what, uh, what's in front of them and what they're able to do and how we can help them achieve what they're looking to do. And what we pride ourselves on is how we can customize it to each individual. You know, it's not just uh, – a uh, one shot that fits everybody. We we take what everybody's situation is and we break it down and we fit it to do whatever they need it to do. Yeah, no doubt about it. And that's and that's why if they go to y'all, give out the website first off. Yeah, it's uh, www.firstsouthland.com, and it's got all the information they need to know uh, right there in front of them. How to get in touch with us individually. Uh, tells us about our loan programs and just basically everything we have to offer. You know, and if somebody's looking for land and they don't know where to start, boy, a phone call to you guys makes a big difference because y'all can walk through the process. Y'all can take the time to go out there and look at the land. Y'all can give them advice on things like that. And we can. We can. You know, some people don't realize that they may have some land that they want and there's different ways to uh, to help them afford it. You know, some people don't realize that if they buy a piece of timber, uh, timber track that they can actually use that timber uh, to help pay for their loan, um, find ways to make it a little less expensive. Um, 
It really See, but think about what you just said, though. So I'm looking at a piece of land. I'm going, man, it's a little bit out of my range. And you guys come in and go over and say, you know, you got some sellable timber here. And it may be worth as much as the whole land or, or part of the land with what you got uh, and what you want to finance. I mean, that's a pretty good deal. But, but they need to call you all. They need to get in touch with you all. They need to go on the website because there are ways to work things out. And that's what you're saying for the rural area and the rural entrepreneur. Y'all have been there for many, many years. We have. We have. And just a simple phone call. Uh, we can help shed a lot of light on what uh, what people can do and really show them how simple it can be. It's, uh, it doesn't have to be confusing or intimidating. All right, Greg, let's do this one more time. I want the website, and if you got a number that people can call, just go to the website and get the number because we want people to give you all a call because they really, 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 uh, really want, a, want an opportunity to buy some beautiful land. Y'all can help them get the job done. We can, and it's again, it's www.firstsouthland.com. And you can go on there and select the the office that's nearest you, and it has our contact information, and you'll get in touch with the right people. How many? Uh, do you remember how many offices y'all got around right now? Uh, we've got right around a dozen throughout the state, and we've just expanded into the Monroe market um, for Northeast Louisiana. So that puts awesome. us in Winsboro, Tallulah, and Monroe now. Wow! So y'all y'all expanded since the last time I talked to you. That's exciting news, man. And by the way, last thing. Uh, land has always been a good investment. I know people worry about the stock market and what to do with their money. They're sitting on cash. Great investment. It really is. It really is. Uh, you know, it seems to be going up in value every year. Uh, so it's something that you can you can really be comfortable in uh, holding the value and not worry about uh, the market at all. Yeah. So very, uh, very, very good thing to look at. All righty, Brett Munson, first off, phone credit. Hey, Brett, thanks, buddy. Thank you, Moon. All righty, appreciate the call. Bye bye. All right, that's it. All right, Deborah Shoe Pick, y'all be cool. We'll have y'all back on. We'll take some phone calls on the flip side. You're listening to the Moon Graffon Show. Don't forget, Cane River Pecan Giveaway. When you send stuff to me, please, please send me your physical address because if you win, we want to mail them out today to you. That's how quick they mail it. So, anyway, Cane River Pecan Giveaway, moon, moon, at moongraffon.com, your opportunity to win. We'll be back. More calls, more subjects, more to go on the Moon Graffon Show. Brandon, go ahead and, and text her and give her the other number. She just wants to get in, I'm sure. We, we, we're busy on the phone lines. We're going to get to y'all. How y'all all? Welcome back. Moon Graffon Show. That's right, folks. Just, I tell it like it is. It's, 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 a, it's amazing to watch this. Bob man, only making a good living because he was tied with John Bro telling the Republicans to suppress and black vote. I've never seen it. Don't, don't even know where it would ever be held at. Uh, don't tell me about the 1960s. This is the 21st century. Uh, anybody, any human being can go vote. There's no suppressing a vote. There are vote cheating and vote rigging, and we all know that. We've seen it over and over again. Bob, Bob Mann doesn't write about that. By the way, Obama, in a speech for Clinton, in 84 minutes of speaking on the campaign trail, he only mentioned himself 207 times. <laughs> and if they would ever cover him, from the beginning to the end, first of all, he'd never been president. Number two, he's he's led us to freaking oblivion, and yet they never write anything about him ever. You ever they, they ever write anything about Obama? Healthcare, nothing. The economy, the jobs, dropped two billion dollars to Iran, four hundred million in cash to a bunch of thugs. How much has he dropped in the inner cities? He has once again. I want to say it again. Obama's taking care of the illegals and refugees better than he took care of the inner cities. But yet there's the inner city coming up with the vote again. They're coming up with the vote again, and they're going to vote for Hillary Clinton and then live in hell again. But, you know, I mean, we all, life's about, life. my mom used to say, moon, life's about choices. Oh, I used to make some bad ones, too. 844-766-6607. Hickson has that hotline if you'd like to be part of the program. Uh, it is uh, amazing. Country belongs to all of us, Bernie Sanders says. With Hillary Clinton on the campaign trail, knowing he was knifed, knowing he was knifed big time, okay, knifed big time by Hillary, all set up, and yet telling his people, look, vote, vote for Hillary. Her people, his people don't want to vote for Hillary. I just can't believe he does that. You know, he, he's showing how fake he was. Showing how fake he was. It's, 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 it's just amazing to watch, but that's what's going on. All right, let's go to Shoe Pick and Fallville. How you doing, Shoe Pick? Doing good. Uh, just like to point out two points. Uh, you had Fayard on your program yesterday. She showed her stupidity and ignorance. 
saying you can fix Obamacare. Of course, we know better. You can't do that. And no, you're never going to. Number two, <laughs> yeah. And Bananas Foster, well, up here we've been in extreme drought. We're under burn bans and all. I want him to come up here since he thinks he can stop hurricanes with signing a piece of paper. I want him to come up here and do a rain dance with the bubble guppies. What do you think about that? <laughs> hey, do me a favor. <laughs> I love to see film of him dancing to the bubble guppies. <laughs> Matter of fact, if he danced to the bubble guppies, it would be more normal than what he normally does. Telling people, man, we got man made, we got it, we got man made global warming. Bananas, Lord. I'll, have go mercy. The, I'll go for the bubble guppies instead. All, All right. right, bubble guppies were on a battle with bananas. I'm a bu- bubble yep. guppy guy. Uh oh, here we go, a little bubble guppy too. Hey, can we put this to Foster Campbell dancing to this? Yeah. I, I, can you do the Can you do the banana shuffle? <laughs> I'd like to see him do the banana shuffle on Bubble Guppies. <laughs> All right, shoot pig, thanks for the call. That's funny. I just think if we could put him moving up and down with the Bubble Guppies, somebody can do this with the computer and get it to me. We'll put it on Facebook. Anyway, let's go to Miss Carol Ross. Carol, how you doing, darling? Hey, I'm Carol, good. let me stop you. I want to ask you a question. I think the banana Carol. Boat song. Banana boat song is the way to go. The banana boat song, I like that too. Carol, real quick, I, I mean, this is about the 14th person that sent this to me. Direct TV has blacked out Fox News since this morning. The only channel on the whole entire satellite that is not working. People are hitting me up. I don't have Direct TV, but they're saying Direct TV does not have Fox right now, and it's the only channel that doesn't work. Now, I'm not a conspiracy person. I was just curious if you heard that. Well, yes, because one of, one of the ladies in Zumba this morning said. Carol, it's, I have direct TV. It's been blocked out for three days. She says Fox has been blocked out for three days, so she went to Fox Business. And wow. I, I don't think that one's been blocked out. But anyway, she said Fox News has been blocked out on her direct TV for three days. Well, that's that's interesting because I'm starting to get this from a bunch of people, and I'm going, wow. But I don't have direct TV, but it would be interesting to find out what's going on. I, I have no idea. But they, I mean, if you could, you know, if you trust Google anymore or any of those search engines, because they're all in the tank. Well, if it, if, if it would be uh, Hillary Clinton's search engine, I would trust it a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> hey, put it like this: it would be clean for sure. <laughs> yeah, you, you want to search her engine? I'll tell you. Uh, that. Yeah, yeah. I might want to stay away from that engine, but go ahead. Well, I, I mean, I I don't know if you've all I haven't been listening earlier. I was having fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, that Scott Angel piece, I, I don't know whether it's cynical, stupid, or what, but, no, uh... I did, I give you my take, and since you didn't hear it, I said it was a piece for Radar. Radar. It was a piece yeah. for him, because what well, it did on his side, it just lied and said conservative Republican. But if you flip it and you read it, go back and read it, it if, if you just sent that piece out, it would look like everything you would want in a liberal Democrat candidate. Well, yeah, exactly. Now, at the top, on his side, on the Scott Angel side, it said, uh, when you compare, the choice is clear. Why would he even bother comparing himself to the liberal Democrat? Everybody knows that. Why didn't he compare himself to the other I, conservatives? I, if you're trying to convince conservatives to vote for you, you want to compare the other ones. But that's this a good one point. Like a promotional piece for Raider. And by the way, that's what I call look it. At, look at the front, and all it says is, you know, all that blah blah about 100% uh, pro-life. Uh, NRA rated, law enforcement supported, blah blah. But it didn't. It didn't counter any of the points on the back. Now, Raider says he's for Obamacare. Is Angel against Obamacare? He didn't say that. Raider is for free college tuition. Is, is Angel uh, against free college tuition? You know, Good Raider point. is for the president's energy plan. Where is Angel on that? He didn't really lay out his. Um, his philosophy. But you know, you, his- you're right. Every time you've gotten a mail out, if, if you got two candidates on it and whoever sent it out will show they're pro this and I'm pro this and it's totally opposite. Didn't do that. Which, but see, Scott Angel cannot send out a mail of peace compared to other Republicans well, because and, he would be the got- left of all of them. No, let me tell you what. It's, first of all, it's a muddled message. That's number one. Mm-hmm. Number two, you got the picture of Mr. Raider on there. Big as day, I mean, as though it's a promotional piece for him. So, therefore, you have to believe this is a really cynical ploy. I think I think it is that. I think it's no doubt that's part of it. Either he thinks that certain people in the black community will not really pay attention to this, and or or he thinks that the best thing for him is to get Mr. Raider in the runoff. 
But either way, it, it doesn't work. It's, it's not a clear promotion for Scott Angel. It doesn't tell me anything about Scott Angel's philosophy, although I know. <laughs> I know Scott Angel's philosophy. <laughs> get elected. <laughs> get elected and get at the public trough again. Sorry, that's how I feel. Well, <laughs> it's, uh, he's a public trough guy, and that's all he's ever been. And it's a big disappointment. I like Scott Angel personally very much. He's very glib. Uh, you know, he's very charming. Uh, I like him. I know a lot of his family members. They're lovely people. But I'm telling you, his record in public office has not been good. And if you look at that whistleblower suit from when he was Secretary of Natural Resources, that is very damning. Yeah. Oh, no doubt about it. He did not protect the interests of the state of Louisiana. Well, you know, I talked to somebody in the with Public Service Commission, and they said when he votes on something, he weighs how it affects him only. Then he makes his vote. It's never to, never going to man up. And that's what I'm saying. You can man up in a speech in the Cajun Dome, but go man up in Congress, and that didn't happen. All right, Miss Carroll. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. He's very glib. I mean, he's charming. He's very glib. But I don't think that's what we need in in Washington right now. He also <laughs> he also took down a conservative Republican to help a liberal Democrat put mega taxes on us, too. I don't forget yes. things like that. Yes, he did. Yeah. Anyway, I right. hope you have a great weekend. Let's uh, <laughs> stay strong. All right, Carol. Thank you very much. Appreciate right. the call. I am. I'm just waiting for the next uh, Trump drop. Uh, by the way, Brandon, I'll be in Tiger Stadium Saturday for the big game, for the really big game. I'll be in... Paradise on Earth in the Far Beach. Yeah, you, you, you'd be away from politics and sports. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh no, I'm watching sports. I'm going to be. Hold watching up, though. Let, let me call game. your wife and see what time you're going to be watching these games. <laughs> Brandon, real quick, uh, LSU has a great shot to win the game, and I'm not basing on what everybody's saying. Hmm. But one thing scares me a little bit: the fans have made it. It's kind of like this election. We, we really pumped up thinking Trump got a shot. That's why I'm not getting too high or too low. Whatever's going to happen Tuesday night's going to happen. I think if it's close, it may last six months before the, we decide. But here's the deal. If the Tiger fans, they base everything off beating Alabama. Mm. If you beat them, that's awesome. But if you get beat, how do you bounce back the next three weeks? And that's what that's the thing I'm looking at going, wow, hold up. To it. Hey, this is it. I'm going to be there myself. So, you know, I'm going to be one of them in the, in the stands cheering them on. This but my me- point being is... I'm just asking you, uh, by the way, somebody was saying on per subject of direct TV, I do have Fox on my direct service. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's just the area. But anyway, uh, I'm, I'm saying what if, if, if you do get beat, whether it's a blowout or you get beat by one in the last second, what happens then? Because all your hopes are in this one game. What I'm wondering is, is tonight's game going to be the difference between seeing a potentially Coach O at LSU for the future or being gone after this year? If he loses and wins the next three stays, I don't think the Alabama's going to base for him. I'm worried about the fans and the players. This is it. This is it. This is it. How you come back and get pumped up against Florida and Arkansas? And oh, I think Florida things. will give. Uh, I think Florida, Florida is automatic built in. Yeah, and and the way that Florida was kind of celebrating, some of the players were doing a couple classless things yeah. concerning you know Mike the Tiger passing away. Mm-hmm. I think people will get fired up for that. Florida well, Gordy Rush was on a program, and Gordy made the comment that the Florida LSU rivalry had kind of died. They just reopened. Yeah. It. So, but I, I'm just concerned. That's what I'm concerned about. Uh, but but you know you talk to everybody you know LSU has a great chance to win the ball game. I, I just re- I just caution people to remember this is this is a very good Alabama team. Is Alabama due to lose? That's what I'm wondering. Well, when you won 20 in a row, it's gonna catch up with you. It may as well catch up this weekend. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll take Most a break. Definitely. You listen to Moon Graffon Show. Don't go nowhere, folks. A lot more to come and your calls as usual. By the way, Brandon, I'm getting even more uh, news from Directv. CNN was out this morning along with Fox News. So I mean. Look, folks, it doesn't – I'm not saying this. I don't know about the conspiracy stuff because I can't get into that and I can't prove that anyway. But, uh, you know, some people are saying they were out too. Some people say they, they weren't out. Uh, my Fox and Friends is not working too. But the show before, it, it, it is okay. Fox and Friends first is on. But as soon as Fox and Friends come on, uh, it's not working. Who is sabotaging our channel? Can you put my name in the nuts giveaway? <laughs> Uh, tell you what we could do. We could do a we could do another nuts giveaway, but I, we won't do uh, cane rubber pecans. We could do a nuts giveaway. One meal you have to sit down with bananas fast and eat. This is when you leave that thing, you be going, and then you learn all about man made global warming. We got it. He said it. We got it. We must have it. Let's go to Deborah in West Monroe. How you doing, Deborah? 
That's affirmative, Moon. Uh, I turned on my TV this morning, and for some reason, and I'm not a conspiracist, I know something's going on. Fox is out. Fox News is out, but Fox Business is on. So, uh, yeah, we can all put on our tinfoil hat. Something is going on, and isn't it kind of crucial? Just a few days before. Uh, yeah, but this, so what you're telling me, you can't just turn to MSNBC and get the same coverage? <laughs> oh, I'm sure I could. By the way, by the way, a guy out of the Alexandria area tells me he's got a, uh, uh, he's he's got all his uh, direct TV plan great, Fox News included. So I, I just that's what I'm saying. If everybody didn't have it all over the place at the same time, I think we would have something, Deborah. I, I look, I'm not a conspiracy person. I don't trust the press and people like that either. Well, I am, but look, I, my my reason for calling Moon is today. Uh, well, we know we've just lost two more of our brave warriors overseas in this great Obama administration Middle East conflict going on. It's been going on for two thousand years that we're going to somehow solve. And uh, you keep hearing that our brave men and women over there are just there for advisory, mm-hmm. you know, consulting. Mm-hmm. And the Iraqis are just kicking butt over there, taking mm. Mosul. Yep. Well, let's remember that the Iraqis were given our taxpayer money, our yeah. best weapons. And as soon as ISIS came in, what did they do, Moon? They threw up their hands. They hauled their booties, gave all that we gave them to fight for themselves, for their own country to ISIS now to harm our own. Mm-hmm. We have now lost five brave soldiers since October, and we're still hearing how we're not there for anything but to just advise. No, we are the spine behind the Iraqis. Without our spine, they are not going to do anything, and that's always been the case. Anyway, pray for our people over there. Okay. And God bless you, Moon. All right. Thank you, darling. Appreciate it. 844-766-6607. Hickson has a hotline. Let's go to Ray and Lafayette. Ray, how you doing, sir? I am blessed and grateful. All right. You sound like me. Uh, I've been wondering about something for some time, and I finally found the answer last night. I yes, got sir. on the computer and Googled, would you like to guess who has the lowest IQ of any president in history? Well, guess. Uh, 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 Obama. You're exactly right. I would think and that would also, be right. I would think that would be easily all, saw. He's a community organizer, right? And in the same category, Hillary Clinton is also in that category. Now, this will surprise you. Uh, uh, Trump, Donald Trump has an IQ of 158. 158. Einstein only had 160, so he is classified, and this is fact. Look it up. Get on Google and check it out. But Trump has an IQ of 158 and is classified as a genius. What about, uh, what what, what did you say Einstein was? 160. 160. Man, he was only two shorter than me. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, okay. I was 162 right. on my IQ. I was 160. <laughs> yeah. Okay, make it a great day, man. All right, I just did. I made you laugh. Okay, that buddy. makes it a great Thank day. You. Thanks, Ray. Appreciate the call. Uh, how about that, Brandon? You was on the line. Trump has an IQ 158, which is a genius. The lowest IQ is Obama, which I believe. He run his mouth. The press helps him. The the, the people that vote Democrat vote Democrat. No matter, it makes him look smarter than he is. You do number devastate us, which ain't too bright. We'll take a break. You're listening to the Moon Graffon Show. How not <laughs> to win a contest. <laughs> By the way, I pulled out a 2003 newspaper for you, too. Oh, man. Hey, you remember uh, LA4 was going to. Here's the headline the editorial Study puts LA4 ahead of the class. You're talking about the pre K program? Mm. 2003. Cool. This is 2016. We last in education. Mm. This is what they told us. This is the bunch of bull they told us. Anyway, I found this old article too, Brandon, and uh, it makes a difference for children in the future. Last in education. But hey, we got pre-K for man. That was an awesome program, wasn't it? Captain Norman joined me. Captain, 
Don't send me no more. Morning. Don't don't send me no more pictures. You sent some pictures the other day, Brand. Brand, Brand you we, sent me. We out here this morning, and we've got about twenty in the box, and uh, it, you know it's a little slower this morning than usual, but uh, we'll go catch them this afternoon. But you know it's funny. You sent the picture, and Brandon, when we went to the break, he said, "Dude, Captain Norman." He said, the politicians don't mess with you as bad as seeing a good fishing trip. You you freaking out. I said, well, 45 specs by 915, back in cleaning them. I said, that sounds like a heck of a morning to me. It was. It was a great morning. Uh, it was a little slower this morning. We didn't have a tide, but we've been able to find some fish and uh, catching them all on plastic. And it's going to get better if we can get a little cool weather, man. Duck season opens next Saturday over here, and we don't. We don't have any weather to wear a jacket in. Man, I got I got to tell you, if, I, if I'm going fishing with you today, I'm going in shorts. And this is November uh, the 3rd. I know. I know, man. Whatever, it's November 4th today. Yeah, it's it's November the 4th. So it's a bit well, right. November, they, these people that want to just get off away from the hunting for a day or two, they need to give me a call. I got some days left. I got about 15 days left in November. And we book in December now for a few days. But uh, if they give me a call at 337-884-0656 or and go to aspeccharters.com. The other thing, too, I want people to know that if it's if it, if we don't have a real cold winter, those fish will bite in through December. Well, you, you can tell them, Moon. That's why I'm advertising with you. We normally, <laughs> we normally quit giving you money around the 1st of November, but we're going ahead. It's such an unseasonably warm yeah. year. Yeah, you so. We, we're running it through. Well, good. I need every help I can, uh, all the help I can need from Obamacare. You're a poor man. Well, (laughs) hey, look, it's going to be Trump care after next year. Well, I'd rather be Trump care. All right. Take Take care, Cap. Thanks for the call. Hey there, folks. 20 something specs already this morning. It's only what time? 10, 1036. Sounds like we ought to be fishing. Darla in Bossier City. How you doing, Darla? I'm good. How are you? Doing good, Chef. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment about the direct TV and the Fox yes, ma'am. News. Yes, ma'am. My son, my son called me and said, if you put your TV on SD instead of HD, it comes through. Say that one more time. If you put your TV on SD instead of HD, it'll come through. That's simple. That, yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I'm not going. I'm not. I'm not going. I'm not going to tell somebody they didn't. You know, something would messed up, but. I'm getting too many people to call in now say they're getting it. So, uh, oh, really? you know, yeah, I mean, a lot of people have gotten emails and even texts saying, hey, man, I'm getting mine. Hey, mine never ran out. So I, I don't understand what's going on, but uh, I'm not I'm not as quick to jump on the conspiracy stuff. Well, I kind of thought it was a uh, had something to do with the politics myself. So, but it doesn't. So just put it on the SD instead of HD and you'll get it. All right, Dollar. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. 844-766-6607. Hicks and hotline. Go to Jack in Alexandria. How you doing, Jack? Hey, Jack's playing some great music. Turn the music up. Oh, Jack, we appreciate that. Look at that, folks. That's one of our callers. Just getting us a little bit to know they listen. What is that, Beethoven? <laughs> I was asking. I mean, I wouldn't cut Jack. It's just nice music. All right, 845 845- Eight four four seven six 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 zero seven is the number. Hickson has it hotline. Hey, by the way, I, I put this whole article back two thousand three when I was fighting them when they were telling us that the uh, they were telling us that the new pre K program in this state LA four was going to make a difference. I told y'all make no difference. It didn't make a difference. It it was never going to make a difference. And they got a report, and this thing was based off of effort. And I'm holding it right here. And this was a news star with Ken Stickman, the retiring Kathy Sparnock. And one of the comments they made, the Public Affairs Research Council, Louisiana states that putting at-risk pre-K on the MFP would be great. They're going to say, if Louisiana is serious about children's education, state leaders must show the commitment to fund and offer the best pre-K program across the board. It will make a difference for children and their future. Well, what was the difference? When, when I told you all this. All this stuff they write is a bunch of bunk and BS. New pre-K program. As I talk to teachers, because I go talk to real people, I said, man, it was no, ever no different than that program than the federal program. Ever was no, it was not a difference. Y'all remember me talking about this? You just negative. But negative, I was honest. There was no way it was going to make a difference. It was the same program. It's funded differently. 
Another way to get more money in education. That's all. Never designed for anything more than that. And, uh, you know, I just, every now and then I like to remind myself I am right every now and then. And when I was going through the, not, I really wasn't going through the memories, Brandon. I had to clean out some boxes. I chunked a bunch of stuff. I kept all the stuff that was said negative about me, too. <laughs> I could bring you all the nasty stuff if you want me to. Boy, there was, there was a lot more things said nasty about me than I, than I thought at the time as the program grew. There were some really doozies out there. Not about old moon. Yeah, right? I'm telling you, man. <laughs> I'm like you. It's hard for me to believe, too, Brandon. <laughs> so Jack in Alexandria, maybe a little more Beethoven. Jack, how you doing? <laughs> hey, man. I mean, you're the nicest guy that everybody knows. Nobody there criticizes you. Uh, you know? and, and, and that's the kind of people I like. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I listened to you yesterday, and you were talking about the 65% increase in the health care premium. Yeah, that was all. It was just a little increase. No no problem. I just write a check. Yeah. But I got, I got, hey, I got checks still in my checkbook. That means I got plenty of money, right? <laughs> Well, you know what? I don't think you'll ever make, I don't care what you make, enough money to pay for those increases. All this is is this is just another way to go to universal health care. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what, man? Like, let me tell you, the last two years in the state of Louisiana, I didn't mean to call you and talk to you about this anyway, so I'll bring it up now. I had a uh, 11% automobile insurance increase. 2015, just got the 2016, it went up 12%. Mm-hmm. And so everything is going up. And I don't think, I don't think the average person, you can go out there and work your brains out. If we keep on at this rate, I think it's, I think it's doomsday for the middle class. That's my personal yeah, the, the, the beat on the middle class is phenomenal by the left. Phenomenal. The debt they running up, phenomenal. The middle class would like to do for themselves. They just, they, That's right. the middle class is getting tired. You know, I can look at this thing and say, man, I'm tired of fighting this. Tired of fighting. I'm not, I'm not tired of fighting it. I'm going to be tired of fighting it when they put me six feet under. I'm going to keep fighting. Yeah. And if I don't do a radio program, I'll fight it another way. Uh, it's just hard to fight the bureaucrats, you know, trying to put Hillary Clinton in the White House, who's unqualified, unfit, and does not belong, corrupt. She'll own every department to be even more corrupt. That's right. And you know what, I man, your position and the stand you've taken, you know, it's not beyond my, my thought process that somebody's uh, uh, trying to get back at you as well, too. And that's cool. That's cool. I mean, wiping me out don't okay. change. Wiping me out don't change. Well, you're nothing. the nicest guy I know, okay? Yeah, I agree with that, but you only know two people. And well, let me tell you one more thing. You know what Brandon said? Brandon told me uh, uh, when I called him just a minute ago. He said the next time you're on vacation, that every time he there's a break, he's going to say, this is so-and-so is, is taking a, 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 the vacationing motor phone. <laughs> I don't care. He can tell people <laughs> I went fishing. I don't care. <laughs> if, with you, man. What I do with my time off is my business. I'm not asking Brandon what he's doing this weekend. All right, 844 <laughs> By the way, unemployment numbers 49 only 161,000 jobs. You ready for this, Brandon? Record 95 million people out the workforce. Also, multiple job holders hit record high. People with more than one job to make ends meet in a Barack Obama economy. FBI agents see, guess what, in Hillary? You ready? They're saying this. The Antichrist. FBI. And by the way, Podesta, he practices occult magic. I'm telling you. You might not, you don't want to believe there's a Jesus in the ears. You better believe it's the other side as well. And we got them, and they're running everything. We'll be right back. Hi, y'all. Welcome back. Moon Reform Show. Great to have you with us. 844 766 6607. Hickson has a hotline if you'd like to be part of the program. You know, my friends at Stein, and you got to know them. They're, what a great story. Everything for your home and yard. Dad came back and said, I'm going to start a business. I fought the good fight in World War II, and now we're going to start a business, and it's Stein Lumber and it's Stein now. Everything you need for your home and yard, everything. Better brands, lower prices, you bet. And I got to tell you right now, folks, they are having a big, big sale right now. And uh, the holiday savings sale, a Black Friday sale on uh, refrigerators and washing machines and dryers and things of that nature. Uh, Black Friday's already started with them. And all the big names, Frigidaire, Whirlpool, 
Samsung, I mean, Amana, Maytag, they got it all at Stein. You don't want to miss out the sale. Special financing for 12 months. And they got everything you need. You want to, if you got something, anything for your house, your yard, they've got it. They got cooking stuff, ranges, uh, everything you can imagine. Drive through Lumberyard. I, I am really impressed with Stein. If uh, it drive through Lumberyard, how can you not be impressed with Stein? But anyway, they are doing such a wonderful job. They got 12 great locations. You can go to their website. They got a giveaway going on right now that you can enjoy as well. Stein, you don't need to go anywhere else. Stein is, I'm telling you, it is a place to go. And if you're rebuilding on your home still, you need to go to Stein as well. Home improvement, equipment, everything you need right there at Stein. So check them out, steinhome.com, steinhome.com. You're going to be glad you did, folks. These are the real Louisiana people. All right. By the way, unemployment, uh, probably around 11 or 12 percent, but they're not going to tell you that. 95 million people not working. Multiple people with two jobs trying to make ends meet. You know, if the press was doing their job and they're not, uh, first of all, Obama never won. Would have never won the first time. Hillary would be already done. They just do their job and be fair. They won't. If, if, if you had an election right now with everything going on and the press was against Hillary Clinton, they would be out there interviewing people about health care every day. You'd see it every day. They would be out there interviewing people about people who have two jobs to make ends meet. They would be out there interviewing people that had been hurt, had friends of people killed by illegals coming across the border. They would be going through inner cities and finding out why hadn't inner cities gotten any better under Barack Obama, but we've because he's favored illegals and refugees more than he's favored the middle uh, the, uh, inner cities. They could, they could be doing it over and over again, and then Hillary would be wiped out. But they don't. They're not going to tell you about the economy and the tough times we're getting ready to have. They're not going to do that, folks. The only time you're going to hear about it, if Trump wins, if Trump wins, then you're going to start hearing about it, and they'll start blaming him. Barack Obama got eight years of free, free press except for talk radio and other places that actually held him to accountable free run, total free run on a guy that was really bad for this country, horrendous for this country, pathetic for this country. He would have been a good president in Cuba and Venezuela because that's the type of people they want. Send him to Cuba. Let me say, if you send him to Cuba or uh, uh, Venezuela, you think he'd change that around? Wouldn't have no tax dollars? No, he couldn't. He couldn't at all. Eight four four seven six 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 zero seven Hickson as a hotline. Alice in New Iberia. How you doing, Alice? I'm doing fine, thank you. And I want to tell you, we really enjoy your program. It gives us Cajuns a, a, a opinions to sell to to say, and that is a great, great asset. Well, thank you so much. I love you, area. I get over there sometime. I got some good friends in New Iberia. Get a chance to go. I slide to New Iberia to eat a little bit every now and then too. They got some great oh, restaurants yeah. and, oh, yeah. and great oh, yeah. places. I got a, I got one friend over there. She they just won't cook for me, but they will take me to a restaurant. They tell me, <laughs> they tell me she can't cook, and and the bottom line is in 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 Louisiana, all the women can cook. A lot of the men can too. That's true. Yeah, yeah I'm 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 a great Italian cook. My meatballs uh, and spaghetti on New Iberia are known. Well, I got I, I got nude for you. I, when I swing through, just have a plate ready, and I'll come eat. Oh, oh, okay. uh, my my, what I wanted to talk about today is the women in politics. I'm not against women being in politics, but first they should stay home and raise their children. And I'll give you some examples. Here are a few of the names that, with Hillary Clinton. Loretta Lynch, Donna Bazile, Cheryl Mills, Nancy Pelosi, Huma. I could go on and on, but I know you don't have time. <laughs> but this, you know, these women are absolutely, look at them. There are the problems with the Hillary uh, election. Well, of course, Hillary is the big problem. But mm -hmm. these women have assisted her sure, sure. in doing the illegal things. And I almost agree with the woman who called a couple of weeks ago that said women shouldn't be in politics. First of all, stay home and raise your kids. I, I, could, I did a, a report on what, what is – I took a reading, a writing class, and I did a report on what do I dislike the most. And, of course, the bar, abortion was one of them. And I, there was an article in the Houston paper that more girls, teenage girls, became pregnant in their own homes between 3 and 5 in the afternoon. Mm. And some no one's home with the ch with the children, and mm -hmm. so women should realize what they're here for. I not I think 
once they raise their kids, or if they don't want kids, that's when you make the choice. Oh. Somebody has got to be raising the yeah. children. But, uh, yeah. but, but the, these, I mean, these women, the, all of the women are the cause of this terrible thing that's happened in our government. And I mean, the Justice Department. Well, hold on, there. you got to you got to blame men too. The, the illegitimacy, the illegitimacy well, has course, caused well, a lot of the problems in this country because. Uh, kids having kids, going back to what you were saying, and that way the, the the illegitimacy is a gigantic problem causing problems left and right. But once again, Democrats, have all the sex you want, smoke all the dope you want, get drunk as you want, and uh, abort the baby if it comes along. They they just, the policies have not held firm. And, and if you go look at what's happening in the inner cities, it's it's been ten times worse. But, we don't, but we're not going to talk about that because the press is not going to write about it. Well, the the women can always say no. I understand, but it, it takes two to tango. That's all I was saying. All right, Miss Alice. Got to run. God bless. And uh, send, bye some bye. Me- send some meatballs this way. Me and Brandon do not mind eating on the program, I can promise you. You saw okay. we, we've had boudin hall crackers and everything you could imagine up here this morning. I, I will I will consider that very seriously. Oh, if you bring it by, don't worry about it. It won't go to waste here. <laughs> all okay. right, Alice. God bless. Thank Bye-bye. you very much. 844-766-6607. Hicks and Desert Highland. Will you, you have a problem eating meatballs? From a nice young lady? Uh, not none whatsoever. <laughs> Man, Brandon was up there licking the plate of the uh, the boot a while ago because there wasn't none left. No, man. So uh, the eight, eight pieces you had before just weren't enough. It was not enough. Okay, they man. were on point. Yeah, you got to be on. All right, let's move on. Uh, Montgomery, Louisiana. Steve, how you doing, sir? Uh, pretty good, Moon. I heard your interview yesterday with Carolyn Fayard. Yeah, and she. She said she was concerned about the oil industry in Louisiana. How in the world could you be concerned about the oil industry and vote for Hillary Clinton like she said she's going to do? Well, it's not, well, you got to remember, and I know Caroline. I like Caroline personally. Uh, Caroline's trying to run exactly like Mary Landry did, exactly like she did. And uh, she's got to like the oil and gas industry. The Democrat Party hates the oil and gas industry. Bananas Foss is out there talking about we got man-made global warming. And he wants to bring the oil industry to its knees worse than it is right now. And and so, you know, I don't know. That's that's, that's a good question, though. Yeah, well, un- unfortunately, I think she's probably going to be in the runoff. And I'll, I'll give you another surprise. I think the 200,000 um, voters that voted for Rob Manis in the, in the um, election when uh, the, the Cassidy Landry race, he finished third. I think they're still with him. I've talked to over 1,000 people. I've campaigned for him. I'm just a volunteer. I, I, I don't want anything from him. Don't want a job, anything like that. I'm, I'm just think he's the best man, and I, I'm finding that he has a lot of support in my area. And I, I'm predicting those two will be in the runoff. Right. It, it, I, I'm gonna wait and see what happens. You know, he got 14 percent the first time, and uh, I hope, I hope, I hope uh, all over the country polls have been wrong for a long time. So we'll see what happens. Well. Yeah, I think he has a better chance than most people think. I've talked to over a thousand people, and that's a greater number than these polls are talking to. Yeah. All right, got to run. Thanks for the call. One more, real quick. Carmen, last one of the day in Lafayette. Carmen, how you doing? Hi, I live in Lafayette, but I'm originally from New Iberia. But I'm almost embarrassed to say that because Miss Alice just set us back about fifty years. Okay, Ms. well, why, go ahead and say why. Women, Miss Alice said that women need to stay home and raise their children pretty much and not be in any kind of politics and pretty much not work. Um, I very much support women in politics. I mean, do I think Hillary is the candidate? No. I'm a conservative Republican. Um, I have a full-time job. My husband has a full-time job. We have family helping us raise our very small children, one with special needs. And I almost I've never called it to your show, but I almost take offense to her saying that women should r- stay home and raise their children because, you know, th- that's a 1950s thought process, and it's just not right. All right, darling. Not- Thanks for the call. Appreciate the call. Now, she did offer us some meatballs and spaghetti. Can you cook some and drop it off? And that may make me sway you a little bit better your way. <laughs> God bless. See you Monday.